I don't want a close up. I don't want a too close up. You so know, I don't want to be so like to, on yeah, but BBC. We have to match the fucking shot, so, so I'm going to have to be in the. Fr- so so you get further away yourself because your head is big anyway, so it takes up the whole screen. Is my it, it, am I closer up than Hannah in the two shots, Daniel? I think I think you just take up more room. Like I think it's. I just you have the biggest head in this family. <laughs> I don't I don't think it's the biggest brain, but the biggest head. Nightmare. Okay, let's go, Jack Daniel. Daniel Jack. It's good. Uh, shall I put my headphones on? Yes. <coughs> put them. Jack ja- 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 Daniel. Headphones on. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think we. I, I'm not prepared for this because uh, it was a last minute thing. Oh, Jack yeah. is going away. So. You're still doing your stand up. Oh, I'm still doing stand up. Okay, go on. Oh my! I yeah. didn't, oh shit! No. Improv. Yes. Improv. 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 Come on, let's go, Jack Daniel. Daniel. Yes. Or Jack, introduce us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to and that's why we're not together, starring David McSavage and Hannah Andrews. Thank you. Welcome to and that's why we're not together. Joined by my sons Jack on sound, Daniel on video. Uh, they someday this. Uh, Kingdom will be yours. Thank you. And they are we're princes. Um, I just wanted to share with you the the nightmare that is setting up this video podcast. Uh, just some <laughs> housekeeping. Jack is heading off to Greece tomorrow. Can we say that? To Athens, yes. Yeah, Greece. Greece, yes. yes. Yeah, I you wouldn't you get to Athens if you didn't go to Greece, mate. Yeah, but if you go indeed, to Greece, indeed. you could go to a lot, a lot of places. Greece, uh, the cradle of civilization. Yes. Maybe. Is Macedonia a part of Greece? Macedonia is no. not a part of Greece. Have, have no. you heard uh, there, there's been a, there, I mean, it's been settled now, but because uh, North Macedonia is a country. But, the, you know, Alexander the Great, he was a Macedonian, but Greeks are very proud of their uh, history heritage and, and they believe that Alexander the Great is a big part of their mm. Hellenistic heritage but a lot of Macedonia what's Hellenistic what's Hellenistic Helen? is uh, the Greek world it's how you distinguish between Romans and Greeks so say, Alexander the Great wasn't Colin Farrell in Alexander the Great and it was a great disaster oh my god it was so bad it and I think Fiona so Shaughnessy might have made it a quick appearance in that Fiona Shaughnessy my ex-girlfriend no, I don't know that. It yeah. was too, uh, I think I think she I think she ran a call. Uh, she ran she ran somewhere going, you know. And did she even say uh, anything? Uh, Longtopinus, or you know, some <laughs> Roman name. But listen, but, if you but, paid but, a yeah. lot of money to do so, I would do it with fucking right. No problem. I know. I'm just saying. I that could not even appear just being a trailer uh, on oh, the well, film uh, set. Can I just say that Hannah is now totally in love with Fiona or Shaughnessy? Oh, I always because um, you know Hannah. Go- oh yeah, talk <laughs> about. So Hannah did her stand up, <laughs> uh, yeah. and that's why we're not laughing last week. And um, somebody wrote in the YouTube comments. What did they write? They, they wrote, Hannah is woeful. And I, I had to look up dictionary what woeful means. And who the fuck used the word woeful? I mean, I've oh, never really? Heard. It really got her woeful. Really and she's been using the phrase now for the past <laughs> few days. That's woeful. <laughs> And woe, it, you know, because woe means woe is me. Woe, sadness, I guess, isn't it? Woe. Yeah. So, I'm, so it's full I'm of woe, full sad, of sadness. I'm bad. Or? Yeah, it's full of woe. It's 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 it's, it's atrocious. It's oh yeah, but you know I'm fucking it's Polish. I start cursing like don't curse, curse. Uh, and Polish people are really sad from the nature. We are really tragic. Yes, well, that is wo- woe means great sorrow or distress. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, th- I certainly picked up that. You know the way you can pick up emotion from the timbre or the. Uh, the quality of people's voice and when i first started dating dating <laughs> hannah uh, I, go, I, I, I i went to poland and just i didn't understand polish but when you'd hear people in polish there was always a feeling of uh doom 
or something in the mm. actual sound. Ah, you know, but eventually we'll be invaded by fucking Germany or That's something like true. that. That's true. I think a lot of people are more Fatal- fatalistic and pessimistic. Yeah, I like, and like fatalism. And they always. Well, we are all, all are going to die anyway, and uh, that's. Yeah, but so like, I mean, who gives our a shit? body is going to die, but our soul lives forever. Well, you see, that's. I think that's kind of disgusting. Can I just say that we are all fully integrated? To say that somehow, our bodies aren't really to care about. It's really the soul that's disconnected from our body. We're all that's part of that. True. It's your brain, and I think it's just that Catholicism, anti-human stuff. We are just like we are from the earth, like the tree is from the earth, we, and apples are from the tree. We are earth apples, and uh, stop all this. You know, oh, I believe in things that I can't see. Why don't you believe in things that you can see, like uh, I believe in see- like oxygen, yes. and uh, you know, can you see the wind? Can you? Can you feel the wind? But what I want to I can to feel say- the wind. Oh yeah, that's like Bro. woke. You know, I feel the wind. I feel you, man. But what I'm saying, your body is your vehicle to experience this life. And it doesn't happen very often. So you've chosen to do so. So this is okay, a well privilege. That's, no, I'm saying what I know, you're but, saying. Yeah, but you're just but making it up. No, I didn't make it up. And, you know, and that's your, why that, that, that stuff vehicle, is making my nose itchy. A if vehicle. your vehicle is not... A vehicle. It doesn't have a gasoline. It's not oiled. It's not going to give you experiences you need to progress in your soul life. So you're saying that. Yeah, but I'm saying that. So you're just a, you're saying that your soul is a passenger in a vehicle. Uh, yeah, I'm in saying, a way. I'm saying that. Y- and it's important. No, no it's, it's not a, bad- a passenger. It's a driver. It's okay. a driver. It's a part. So the vehicle does not move with, without a driver. Well, so they are the f- connected. No, I don't, you know. Okay, just then hang you're on. you're under support, you know. If somebody pushes you, that you life okay. support. Okay, well, I would say that I'm not a driver in my, I'm part of the whole thing. Like the body is the driver, the driver is the body. We're all part of the whole thing. And so t- are you t- saying that your vehicle is, uh, you know, uh, AI just uh, controls your vehicle, not you? Jack? Because that's Jack, I mean, if you're be. not paying are you not attention. In, are you not in control now? Are you not in control? Huh? Are you, are you, not, not, are you not in control of yourself? Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, I've, lost, I've lost the plot with this. You see, I, you see, <laughs> I, I think people like you, they'll, they'll all be, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, man. It's all, yeah, yeah. Because we're, we're debate- actually talking about the same thing. We're just using the different phrases and different language and different, maybe slightly different idea how we see our body. For me, the body is extremely important because without the body, you wouldn't experience anything. You can't walk without your body. Like No, <laughs> you can't. That's why when okay. I twisted my okay. ankle... It really, I just re- really feel like um, I can't walk, I can't experience. Well, it, then you can just get a different body, just driver to driver. Anyway, look. Oh, um, how do I get a different body? I don't know. Just, just tell just, me. Just relieve your body. Into, okay, look, just please. And Okay. I mean. And no. it's not guaranteed that I'm going to reincarnate very soon. So Anyway, so Hannah got this message that she was woeful. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, really um, upset me. Which was, but anyway, uh, going back to Fiona Shocknessy, I sent a clip of, and that's why we're not laughing to Fiona. And, and she, she laughed her she, tits she, off. She laughed her tits off. <laughs> and, uh, but, but I don't the, think but she laughed at my joke. She laughed well, anyway, at the situation yeah, but the point, yeah, but I was in. Anyway, so Fiona left her some, lovely, some lovely messages which yeah. cheered Hannah up. So yeah, thank you very true. much, Fiona. And we will have Fiona on the podcast and at some point. And we will point. make her just tell a joke. Huh? We will make her to tell a joke. No. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like I'm throwing it. Well, in. I can't. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not. No, we don't want to scare people. <laughs> okay. Um. So, Jack is going off to Athens. Uh. For how long, Jack? Uh, I just bought a one-way flight because uh, my plan is to go from Athens up to Istanbul. Oh, yeah. Ma- Macedonia, you were saying, because Alex Mihalovsky, who yeah. was our good friend when we lived in Copenhagen, Copenhagen. Uh, he is from Macedonia. Lovely man. And uh, he did a because uh, because I was a street performer for a long time, as was Alex. And we met on the streets of Copenhagen. And I'd seen a lot of people doing uh, puppet shows, you know, so Alex did this puppet show on the street yeah. and it, his uh, puppet was definitely the most intricate and yeah. mechanically dexterous most, yeah, that I'd, that I'd ever seen. Because so his his puppet was called Mr. Barty. 
Yes, and he and, still has it. And he still has it. And he was, he, he'd, so he'd make Mr. Barty play the piano and all that kind of stuff. And in fact, we were trying to get Hannah to <laughs> the make a, a puppeteer. So he left Mr. Barty overnight in, when we were staying in Hamlet's Gather in <laughs> Copenhagen. Um, and we just we couldn't figure it out. You know, it was so complex. He yes. made he, he just evolved it over years. But it's an mm. incredible uh, thing that he was able to do. And the way he moves the puppet as yeah. well and makes it very very human. Yeah. Actually. Ha- and gather in uh, Danish is street, is it? Gather Hamlet's Gade. gather. Gade. Ge- ge- is it gade? G A D E. Does that yeah. mean street in Danish? Yes. Yes. Definitely. But it, the weird way they pronounce. Gay, gay that to me they, they'd say Helmer's girl. girl so so it sounded like girl g- g- instead of gade or gather or gade they'd say girl so g-a-d-e just tell how they pronounce the word mother or mom more more i mean just sound like the cow mowing <laughs> that's the worst like, you yeah, know, some 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 Danish pronunciation is like all wool slabber hool and all snagger snagger to the Danish snagger. Yeah, the snagger means snagger. Sna- Does that speak Danish? Maybe I don't remember. Hallo, hallo. I remember uh, when 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 we used to hang out. Uh, the Danish they'd 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 say after sitting or talking for a bit, they'd say, "Come on, let's go." Right? They come. So their version of that, you know, the way when you're sitting talking and you want to leave and you go, "Okay." Let's go, right? They go no, scavi, scavi. So which which that. which means no? Shall we? No, shall we? No. But it it, it was always uh, tightly connected to slapping your thighs, <laughs> so you couldn't go no, scavi, no, scavi. It was all it was all no, scavi. Oh it yeah, no, <laughs> scavi, scavi. No, no. But it's funny, isn't it? When you think about the Danish, I just called to say I love you. No, uh, it's funny uh, the Danish. How 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 closely similar the Germanic English. Yes. You know when suddenly someone talks like this, and then you move like twenty kilometers, and someone talks like that, and then you move another twenty kilometers. Someone fucking talking like that, and then you move another twenty kilometers. Someone talks like that, right? And then you move another forty kilometers. And so, you know what I mean? So in a way, you know, when, how does the accents, do, does languages uh, and different languages, are they kind of really weird fucking accents? Because no scavi, no shall we, no scavi, mm. it sounds not dissimilar to shall we. No, because so it's Latin almost like languages. you can imagine, it's like just a really insane accent. Shall we? Shall we? No scavi. No scavi. But yeah. then our accent is probably a bastardization of scavi. But uh, yes, if if you if there was a war against Danes and and Danes were being hunted and you had to find out who was Danish and who was not because they spoke very good English, but there were certain words and vowel sounds that Danish people said that would reveal their Danishness. And one of the words was the word computer. So I'd say computer. computer. Yeah, no, so, so, they, so they'd, they'd be talking very normally. And then they'd say, yeah, no, I'm really happy because I just bought a new computer. So they, 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 they'd go crazy. Their mouths would go mental when they said computer. <laughs> yeah, I really like that computer. 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 I really like that computer. It's the same with um, Canadians. They reveal their Canadianness when they say out, 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 out and about. Out and about. And it's like when uh, uh, people from the north of Ireland say, they don't say now, they say noi. <laughs> no. I remember, I was... Noi! Uh, Sinead O'Connor, And the Australians don't say no, they go noi, which sounds oh. like... Us, uh, go on, what? Sinead grandfather couldn't say, he was... Sinead uh, who? O'Connor. Grandf- Sinead which Sinead O'Connor? Sinead O'Connor who just died. I, was, I, I listened to her memoir, Rememberings, and she said her grandfather, where did he, what came from? He couldn't say the word quiet. He would say quiet. Oh, he didn't dis- differentiate between quiet and quiet. She just could. He just couldn't say it. He couldn't, you know, the pronunciation or maybe the accent. I was watching uh, Sinead O'Connor sing Nothing Compares to You in some festival 2013. And it triggered that memory when I was at some festival. I don't know where it was. Was it Waterford? I, don't I, know, I was it, back yeah. drinking. It's 2014. And she's up on stage. And she she was she looked really well physically, 
and uh, you know, and sh and there was also a big screen that was projecting her image. So, mm. and I was I, I was just cracked open from drinking so much, and you know, nothing compares. Nothing no, no, I'm not going to say. I'm just. Although you're a good singer, I'm not for a good singer. I can just shut you yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 just I've looking been... at her face, and she yeah. and she opens her mouth, and she she look she looked like a jaguar or something. Mm. Nothing. And then and then um, but there's no obstacles if you're open and ready to listen with someone like Sinead O'Connor when she sings. There's no obstacles between her, the emotion that she's conveying, straight in. So I was just. She was like cracking me right open and I was bawling my eyes out and I'm standing next to, you know, are you all right? Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm fucking feeling it, man. David, Incredible. this is quite beautiful. I'm really touched. Oh, Jesus. You described it so profoundly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But the thing is, you see, the thing is, uh, I think I was at that festival with you in 2014. Were you? I think so. What yeah. do you remember, Daniel? What do you mean? What I remember? Like, uh, I was. Did uh, we go together? Yeah, we went together. Yeah, with the little green cars, didn't we? Remember the little green cars? Oh, oh the the band. Yeah. You yeah. got really friendly with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> a, really that was a mistake. <laughs> I I got a <laughs> I, I got a free with ticket your friend, from uh, you, Daniel. Oh, D Daniel. <gasps> Daniel. Oh, no, yeah. now they I, are now, very good band. They were a good band. They're not together. Are they still? N n No, no, no. I think they've changed to Soda Blondie or the the singer. What's your favorite movie? Oh, no, I do. I, me and Daniel, this guy, Daniel, we used to take the piss out of each other. And Daniel isn't like this, but I used to exaggerate his personality. And I, I had him. I think maybe once he said to me, uh, Dave. And he just, yeah, he does yeah, Daniel, talk a little bit like that. What's your, what, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite movie, right? Dave. Yeah. What's your favorite movie? I don't know. I don't know, Daniel. My favorite movie is Rambo. <laughs> okay, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Have you seen Rambo, Dave? Yeah, I don't. Yes, I have. What do you think of it? <laughs> I thought it was good. It was okay. It's my favorite movie. Okay, mate. Hey, what's your favorite movie, Hannah? What's your favorite movie? Uh, um, Broadwick Mountains. Have you seen Rambo? Yes. What do you think of it? Good. Entertaining. It's my favorite movie. You like Brokeback Mountain? <laughs> I love it. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> And I saw it. Can imagine being an actor. <laughs> I'm just. Uh, I just think. Hey, David. Yeah. What? You got. You got the part. Uh, what in Brokeback Mountain? Okay, give us the script. <laughs> <laughs> They yeah. Hello. Sorry. 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 <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Just on page 58. <laughs> <laughs> But they're for they're proper actors, man. They yeah, and it's yeah, yeah. it's just no. It was it was it was a fucking heartbreaking uh, film. Heartbreaking, and the story is even more heartbreaking. Um, it's really short and really concise. That, and it's actually even more in the story than in the movie. So I love I love watching men kissing. Yeah, <laughs> but the you know the, the emotions. Do you like? Do you like? Do you like? Do you like? Watch? I was just looking at no, them but as I'm human just saying. Beings. I'm just having the crack here. No, but a genuine question. Yes. You know the way when when as as a I identify as a heterosexual wardrobe, <laughs> and uh, I like to store clothing in my boxes. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to be all modern. No, no, no. No, but so so listen. When when I see like when I see girls kissing. Mm hmm. You know, it's like, no, it's, it's like, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 And you're looking at women kissing, right? And they, you know, the smooth, tight skin and they're getting into it. It's really cool uh, to watch. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun town. <laughs> <laughs> so when you see guys like, you know, with beer, you know, beards or something. Hi, John, how you doing? And then they start kissing. Do you think, wow, that's so hot? No, I don't think really? so. <laughs> Do you not like watching guys kissing? No, 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 like in the sense of porn. Or gay like, porn. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't think it turns me on. Does it not? <laughs> I shouldn't be even talking about this, but I, I don't think that women, what that, what women think, uh, find it turns me on. Fiona O'Shaughnessy said that pornography <laughs> is Mac the McDonald's for your genitals. It's yeah, like fast it's, food 
fast food. For your yeah. genital tendons. It's sort of, sort of satisfying in the moment, but it <coughs> does not have a substance. It makes you feel sick afterwards. It's instant gratification. Yeah, but you then haven't, it makes you You haven't feel developed sick. the social skills to meet mm. another human being, get to know yeah. them and their values. And long term, it makes you sick. Like it's McDonald's. A, if you eat McDonald's, you become really okay, sick. Okay, let me try and compl- compare, guys, those of you who are regular pornography watchers. Mm. Um, so pornography versus actually going out in the real world and having flesh and blood interactions with other human beings. So compared to fishing then, different types of fishing. So real interaction with another human being is like fly fishing. Right? You have to know how to hold the rod <laughs> you have to you know understand the lay of the lake and you know the movement of the water and where the fish might be and you throw out your line and you just gently you know bring it in hannah i'm trying to talk yeah. here uh, you know yeah, and I'm then you, you slowly bring it in and then maybe you get a bite but you can't jerk the line you have to sort of play with it <laughs> so that that this would be kind of going like oh yeah no i'm really interested yeah whatever you know and then yes and no you know what would you like to have another another drink oh i'm not sure no problem no problem no problem <laughs> you're playing me off right you see and then and then pornography pornography is dynamite fishing just stick a dynamite and the fish just rise to the stir- uh, yes. surface, right? And it's anyway. bad, but you can still do it. Yeah, still so it requires it. no skill. Stick of dynamite, pornography, boom, fish. I think it's really clever, David. I, well, yeah, but he played me off. I am because you've taken it for too long time. I think but it'd be I better just buying it in the supermarket. You know, no, that be... that's prostitution. Oh, that's prostitution. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah, buying fish uh, uh, and not catching your own fish. Yeah, that's and paying pro- for fish. Yes. Yes. It's yes. prostitution. Yeah, it is prostitution. So, no, so I, little, I little are whorehouses for fish. <laughs> <laughs> what if you buy it from a fishmonger? <laughs> that's that's. Uh, oh my God, that's uh, you know uh, selling human. No, that, that's, uh, that's uh, trafficking. That, uh, no, human trafficking. No, uh, buying it from a fishmonger. That's uh, that's uh, like uh, speed human. dating. Oh no, human no. trafficking. Uh, anyway, yeah. okay. Well, I don't know because you're not throwing it back to the river or ocean. Yeah, what, what's catch and release fishing? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're into. <laughs> That's like dating a lot of women at the same time and not promising them. It's like, I think as an Irish man have fear, fear of commitment. Let's do a speed date. OK, OK, right. OK, you stay there. OK, speed dating. Oh, shit. Hi, how you doing? How are you doing? What's your name? Hannah. No how way, me too. Uh, what do you like what? fishing? Do you like it? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah. Oh yeah. Do you do do you like going to cinema? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I do. I like going to the cinema. What's your favorite movie? I don't remember. What's have your you job? Seen, have you seen Rambo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your job? I do you a, have children? I'm a county councillor. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Yeah. Do you have children? Three. Are they grown up? Yeah. Uh, Fuckner, uh, <laughs> Gronya, and Lego. <laughs> Lego, divorced? Lego's finished. Yeah, I'm divorced. My life, my life was wife is finished. What's your? Have you got children? <laughs> oh yeah, the, the time is up. Oh, see Bye. you. Okay, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, that was good. No, I think I, we had chemistry. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I was saying to the lads <coughs> when when uh, when I was drinking and we were hanging. Oh no, I think it was in Edinburgh Festival because Edinburgh Festival is on at the moment. All these young up and coming go getters striving to uh, achieve greatness. But we w- we'd be sitting outside some cafe and we'd play this bonjour game, very immature. So if if uh, a guy walked by, right, if a guy walked by and you said bonjour and he said bonjour back, you'd get five points, right? But if a girl walked by and you said bonjour and she said bonjour back, you'd get 10 points. But if a couple walked by, and you said bonjour to the couple and the guy said bonjour back, you'd get minus five points. But if the woman said bonjour back, you'd get dix points avec medal d'honneur. Actually, I'm explaining that. It sounds fucking stupid. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's like, yeah, whatever, Hannah. You know, the, you had to be there. Okay, we're going to do and that's why we're not laughing. What's the trophy? I mean, what's, what's there? 
Oh, the win. I mean, what are you winning? Just. Jack was saying that you, you and what was you and your mate was were having what, the crack and you were calling we, people Sarah. We, we were, we, yeah, we were like four, fourteen or something. Yeah, and we just uh, sit on the canal on a bench, and everyone who'd go by is, is excuse me, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. You know, stupid. But I think a different name for a guy. But one lady, she was obviously having a bad day, and she was walking by. We were like, Sarah, Sarah, excuse me, Sarah. And then she just kind of, you could see her shaking her head. <laughs> you know, then she like stops and then turns around and she goes, my name's not fucking Sarah. You know, grow the fuck up. You know? <laughs> she said, grow the fuck up. So something like that. She was giving a stink. To yeah, us women we, are the best, man. They're just, when they when they go, they just, they just go for it. It's just the best. <laughs> yeah. Was she like your age? No, or? she was like, uh, you know, 30. She was working, you know. She's coming back from work or something like that. And uh, you we picked the wrong yeah, person yeah. to mess with. Her name is Grania. <laughs> <laughs> Did she tell you her? No, name? no, she didn't tell us her name. And then I was just like, whoa. Sorry, it's whoa, just, whoa, it, was, whoa. it was just a joke. I, was, I think I said, relax. <laughs> I don't think that helped. <laughs> yeah. I've been losing uh, followers recently on Instagram. Why? <coughs> well, not that many, but it's, it's quite freaky. Like, I'm very uh, connected to the algorithms. Which is a good thing. It's, it's quite addictive, but I do need to f- Up have your that game. To, to. But anyway, no, I, I do want to do a post about uh, actors. I know. Did we talk about actors? Did we, Jack and Daniel? We we touched on it last. Well, time. it's just like there was this guy, uh, Breaking Bad actor. What's his name? Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston. <laughs> And he's there and he's pretending like he's like in the front line of fucking Stalingrad or something, you know, all dressed with a like, little bandana. And, you know, all these actors and they all in their in their boiler suits, like protesting. But there's something very arrogant about some of these actors. You know, they're going on about, uh, you know, getting better pay and all that. But, you know, but nobody gets better pay. Anybody who works for an organization always gets the shit end of the stick. And that's just the way it is. That's called capitalism. I mean, it's unfair, <laughs> but it's the way it is. And, uh, you know, if you want to earn more money, you have to figure out another way. You have to come up with a creative way to create wealth for yourself. And then also going on about getting replaced by fucking robots. I don't think I'd mind too much, to be quite honest, because some of those, some of, some, look, what I'm saying is everything. You go into uh, Aldi, you know, there's no, you know, everything's replaced by robots. Everyone is replaced uh, you know, it's just it's just the way things go. But, you know, there are certain jobs. It's so funny because... No, but who the fuck are these actors? Let's replace Brian Cranston with a fucking robot. You know what I mean? Who cares? No, it's... Like, uh, fuck off. I, I mean, think, you know, like in an emergency situation, we need an actor. No, we don't. But what about, like, stand-up? What if there's comedy I think the comedy... comedy w- yes, I've heard, I mean, you know, AI I'm pretty sure that was a South jokes. Park episode where uh, it's like Mr. Funnybot or something. Oh yeah, I think we did a we did a we did a, a sketch about that in uh, the Savage Eye. W- what the future is going to hold? Yeah, you know one one zero zero two two two. I am not, a robot. They talk like us. They are even better. They have better I, pronunciation. I am a robot stand up comedian. <laughs> have you ever noticed that when it is raining, Irish people don't have umbrellas? <laughs> because. Because they are so contrarian, they won't be told what to do by random weather patterns. <laughs> two, 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 one, 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 zero, zero. That's how I laugh. <laughs> That's like, uh, you know, That's reality. actually pretty funny, though. Yeah. But that, Rob, you know, AI I, I would will, use your voice. I heard your stand up last week. Oh, can ha, you do it better? Ha, 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 ha. No, I'm trying to. <laughs> ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah so uh but no it's just like the actors the self-importance of these people listen if you're going to an organization and expecting you know it's such a weak position to be in oh the studio aren't paying the studio don't owe you fucking anything mate oh oh you know that these people are, are struggling to make a living i've struggled to make a living my whole fucking life why don't you create wealth for yourself? That's what I'm doing now, building up an late. audience. How old are you? It's exactly the right time. But he's time. not complaining about it. You okay. know, that's that's that's, the, that's, that's his the, point. The, you know? Yeah. But we are talking protesting, <laughs> protesting. Yeah, but we are talking about a lot of people who are not just actors, but they talking about people who are extras. 
in the crowd. Yeah, so, extras, NPCs, so, non-playable characters. Yeah. And what they should get more money. No, no, no. What do you say? They, Listen, they, if they, they if they if they shouldn't do say? the fucking job if they're not getting paid properly. Well, oh, well, well no, then get you know. Well, there's nothing wrong want? with having a fucking dream. Just pick the right one. If you're not getting paid properly, fucking do something else and figure out a way. You know, create your own mini shit studio or something and yeah yeah that's you know i was a street performer for 20 years brian cranston and (laughs) colin farrell did you see that video of colin farrell with his head around some actor going and another thing and another thing and and the uh, the actor's (laughs) head is going like that and of course the actor obviously is in awe of the fact that colin farrell's his mate so he doesn't say colin can you can you you let me go let me go you know, but it just shows you the lack of awareness of Colin Farrell and the and the NPCs that surround him. These people need help. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking joke. And he said something like, people are, are thinking, oh, will I be able to afford to buy my kids presents at Christmas? Everybody worries about that. And if you can't afford, don't buy Not your fucking everybody. kid presents. Don't buy your kids presents. Colin Hannah used Farrell. to get a fucking orange. Yes, I did use to, to go uh, hey, oranges. Hey, Colin for Farrell, can you hear this? Can Hannah, I? Can go I get you more? Go on, tell 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 Colin Farrell about oranges. Hi, Colin Farrell. I used to get oranges for Christmas, and um, I because was they so didn't cause, traumatized. because he lived. She lived in Poland. Yeah, and the, you never saw a fucking orange. No, it all was your once childhood. a year. It was once a Mother year. Mother fucking and you found it actors under the tree. You actors, you, know, you got or, like you live like many. What? It was a present from Santa Claus. So yeah, he yeah. brought it over from what, the North Pole. What did they call? Yeah, yeah there's no, they're not indigenous <laughs> to the North. Well, okay. I don't know. Shien, it doesn't Shien matter. Shien but wasn't the, but he, wasn't he the brightest uh, spark in the engine. <laughs> no, hey, listen. What did they call Santa Claus in Poland? Święty Mikołaj. What? Święty Mikołaj. No. Mm. And we and so you never saw an orange when you were a child. No, only during Christmas. Oh Jesus Christ. And then you just peel it off and eat it, and it was just like the best thing ever. You know, are you li- are you listening to that, Colin Farrell? <laughs> and by the way, Colin Farrell, if you're so concerned about the filthy old extras that you know, why the, don't the you shy, give them? Some you know, money. give them a cut of your fucking money, okay? I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah, nice one, Colin. <laughs> and and by the way, I, I you you are a good actor, but so fucking what? You know, would I rather have a good actor or a good doctor in my life? Uh, we can heal ourselves. Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, heal ourselves. What are those guys called? Um, uh, the, the, the what do you call those people who heal with organic shit? What are those? Oh, alternative. Yeah, what is it called? Or shamans. No, not shamans. Yeah, no, alternative. No, you medicine? know when you when, you know when you get all that herbs and shit. What yeah, do they No, homeopaths. It, homeopaths. You know, you can imagine going going with a fucking broken leg or something. Okay, yeah, pass me the sage. <laughs> you know, you know you what can't, I mean? Okay, I mean, yeah. David, uh, not blood stupid. spurting out. Okay. Um, you know what I mean? Modern <laughs> medicine is very good in emergency in in surgery. Yeah, that's why it's that's what you need. You don't yeah, need it yeah. any other time. But really. homeopathic path is better for other diseases. Though those uh, long term, chronic. Chronic, you know, and pharma makes money from chronic disease. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, that thing, you know, so me and Hannah went up to Bray uh, to mm. see the procession, but we arrived too late. So Shun- Sinead O'Connor, who died recently, uh, lived in Bray for, I don't know, 10, 10 15. years, 15 years. And it was kind of nice just being there. But, the, you know, there was there was one guy sing- playing a ukulele. You know, and he's singing. You know, it was kind of sweet. sweet. You know, and, and then he's then he's, he does a rendition of "Knocking on Heaven's Door," but he starts going, "Knock, knock, knocking on Sinead's door." <laughs> <laughs> Why would he knock on Sinead's door? <laughs> and then the, you know what I mean. It was well intentioned, but the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And I'm just like, okay, knock, knock, knocking on Sinead's door. And of course, I'm thinking, you know, huh? You know, can you imagine Sinead's dad or something? You're, you're going, you know. It's quite Sinead, scary. Yeah, but it's, it's kind just, of it's like. It's like, you know, like a police or some taxman knocking some, at, at yeah. your door. I just imagine being dead and that, that fucker with his ukulele going. And, oh, yeah. and, you, and you can't move to tell Yeah, to you're just up. like, fuck <laughs> off. I'm fucking dead, you, you shithead. 
Uh, but yeah, and, and it was, I, I feel kind of, so we were just there at the end, people were just standing around uh, the, the house and it was nice. It was, it was, it was nice. I'm glad we went. Yeah, no, you, you, you've got this feeling of unity and you're there to, you know. But a lot of people, a lot of people way. say, oh, you see, during her life, people weren't so, mm. you know, uh, kind and all the rest of it. And uh, but people don't understand that the Irish do l love the dead. I mean, mm. we're much more uh, you don't speak ill of the dead. It's kind of a cultural thing. You speak ill of the living. But once somebody's dead, so John hated him, hated him, hate him, hate him, hate him, dead, loved him. So it's just like, con, 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 love him. Con, 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 dead. Oh, I love John. Alive, con, dead, love, con. Do you think it's because uh, when uh, people think when they die that people are going to talk bad about them or they don't want people to talk bad about well, them? Well, I think there's a, there's a reason that, um, you know, uh, the Irish love the dead because you know you know the way what was it um, that famous author what was his name and his quote was um, any time a friend of mine has a success a part of me dies Gore Vidal and so there's a little bit of that in it um, because it's almost like when an, when someone dies they have they have no chance of succeeding so you're like he I mean so oh I, I love him I love him because he's got you know the the the, the dead person. But but because it's like uh, this big raging is very Irish thing. Yeah, there's a weird thing around death. There's a sort of it's almost I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll think about it and we'll talk about it in the next episode. We're going to have Deirdre Kane on in September because I, okay. I, I went down to All Together Now Festival with her. Yeah, she's very funny. Are you going to do impression of her? Hello. OK, folks, uh, now my favorite part of the show. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Um, ja ja Jack, uh, wait a second. Um, so, oh, yeah, I have to time it. I haven't prepared myself. <laughs> mm. Maybe that maybe it'll be good because you haven't prepared. No, I don't and by the so. way, the last one was a good, a good premise. The idea that uh, you're trying to achieve enlightenment through hard work. The and then you thought, oh, fuck it, it's too difficult. Just have a glass of wine. You get a fast track to mm. uh, heaven. OK, um, OK, uh, Jack, are you ready? Wait a second. Uh, sorry, I just have to turn on the stopwatch. Please welcome. Is it really happening? And that's why we're not laughing I with Hannah so. Andrews. You're simply the best. <laughs> So I was just thinking, I might just retell an old joke and see how it sort of resonates with people nowadays. Because I think I heard something like the, that joke about year 2000. So, um, <clears throat> you know, everybody dies and pedophiles dies as well. And so they go to heaven's door and they knocking at the heaven's door. And <clears throat> who appears? St. Peter. So the pedophile is shocked because that's not what he expected. And St. Peter said, what the fuck are you doing here? And the pedophile says, I'm not here to see you. I'm here to see baby Jesus. <laughs> Am I <open? laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say <laughs> oh that God. in the year 2000, it was really shocking. But I think nowadays it's just like it's a normality. Can we even let that one out, Jack? <laughs> I, I, I don't know what happened. What? I, I don't, what, what was the... I, I was looking at the time. So can, can we let that one out, Daniel? What was it about? Daniel. It's just Did you not get the joke, no? no yeah, I no, did, no, okay. But right. Sorry, Daniel, you heard it. Okay, yeah, go on. yeah, I heard it. Can we, have the, can we let that one out? Um, well, I don't think we named anyone specific. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, what? the fact that the, the, a pedophile is at heaven. The, the but Peter's they do go to heaven's door or bar yeah, door I mean, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, but it's a dirty joke. Like, yeah. Depend, mm. dep yeah I don't know. Sure. 
I don't know. Oh, you just lost it. Well, but I, I really, I remember naively. No, I've I heard was, that joke I, before. I well, you know, you know, and also, look, as shocking as it is, it's not as shocking as what went on no. within the church. So if people have an issue with that joke, they can fuck off. Well, well they can't fuck off, but they can just be horrified by it and they can just move well, on with their lives. Yeah, it's, Nothing it's, needs it's, to be done. Uh, expecting something to be done when you're... Um, uh, offended is like having a great shit in the toilet and then coming out of the toilet and expecting to win an award. No, just have your shit, have your offense shit. And flush. And flush. Thank you, God Jack, sick. Daniel, bank of the net. Yes, but you know, it's having a good shit. It's, it's almost you sometimes feel like you need an award. If it's like that. <laughs> Perfect, and it's just like you seems that you're so light after. Well, that is your w- reward. Mm, yes. Yes. But I think you want to share it with other people because you feel so good. Yeah, and w- women never do. No, women don't do, but they feel, and they maybe if they did share, it would make them feel good. I don't know. That, that sounds like a bit of stand up for next week. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna look into it. Um. Yeah. Okay, uh, how long have we been recording, Daniel? Forty minutes. Feels longer. <laughs> Feels longer, but there's also a a bit about you know Daniel's bed and Jack's bed. So yeah, I know. Hannah. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought that you felt lost, and confused, and that's why we're not together. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. It's nice that Jack is going to Greece because Jack is Athens. I have to say it is nice, Daniel. It's nice that Jack is going to Greece because he's into his history. Uh, Is there anything in particular that you want to see in Athens? Um, I would. Well, I'm staying near the Acropolis, which is obviously a big one. And uh, it'd be nice to see the Pantheon, you know, stuff like that. What's the Pantheon? Um. I hope I'm not getting the, the Parthenon, the Pantheon. I hope I'm not getting this wrong, but it's yeah, the, it's that oh, the famous oh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. structure where it's like a temple and it's been changed into like when the Ottomans were there, it became a mosque. Um, you know, Greek columns. You remember uh, Al Pacino in that f- film where he plays the devil? I, I like women, all types of women, women with legs like Greek columns or something like that. Well, oh, I think I've stolen that. That I want. I like a man with legs like Greek. Columns. It's for, yo, Hannah's into uh, uh, Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Oh Jesus, she uh, loves him. I love he l- his legs. Oh yeah, yeah. She it's funny. His Botox. As as a fifty seven <laughs> as a fifty seven as a fifty seven year old man, I'm oh, yeah. into all yes. women like uh, sexually like oh, s- yeah. sizes. Younger the better. I'm, I'm sorry. That's the reality. That no, the not the no. no. You're the best. No, not the younger the better. Definitely not. I mean, although you know, but it doesn't hurt, and it helps <laughs> a lot. I think men usually, um, but you know, I'm not blaming men, but apparently, if you looked at um, like uh, roots of our attraction, what attracts m- women to men and men to women, we men look for youth and procreation, and youth is procreation. Mm. And women look for um, providing and security. Well, that's the old fashioned social narrative. But, but nowadays, that, that's, you know, like well, that's, not, that's not a social narrative. It's no, a biological, that's a biological thing. Because a biological imperative. If you look at all animals. What's the difference between biological imperatives and socially constructed narratives? I'm just pl- Geographic playing. Geographic imperatives. Yeah. I'm playing the <laughs> devil's avocado. Yes, but you know, that's what women naturally, you know, like their hormones. And what man hormones. So man does not even think. He just looks in the woman. He scans the room, and he picks the youngest one and the prettiest, and and he listens to that one, the most attentively. Oh yeah. That's how it works. And women naturally look for protection. Why Why aren't you listening to her? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Because I'm not the prettiest in the room. You are not, I'm in you this are room so, right now because I'm the, the only room. one. You're so beautiful, Hannah. Thank you. But I'm the only one here. But I'm just talking about if you, you know, if there's a competition. I first I saw you just, in Amsterdam. David, I, first, David. I first saw you in Amsterdam. Mm. Um, 1991. Uh, I think so. 1991. Yeah. And right. I was, yeah. Summer 1991. God almighty. 
So, uh, okay, uh, D Daniel, do we have any news? Uh, very important. Open the cage. Trivia about Nicholas Cage. Not trivia, news. Yes. Nicholas Cage news. Wait, yes. here we go. Uh, That's all you have to do! So, it's good news for uh, up-and-coming actors in Western Australia in a place called Margaret River, Yalingup. <laughs> um, apparently, Nicholas Cage is shooting a movie there called The Surfer. Brilliant. And uh, they're looking for, like, you know, um, kind of young surfer dudes that go around and cause trouble to be in the film. So there'll be auditions for that there and a chance to star alongside Nicolas Cage. He yeah. works his ass off that guy, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. He, does, just, he, does, just, he, he just doesn't, doesn't stop. stop. He doesn't, no. no, he just keeps going. Like, yeah. Any news on Wes Cage's uh, upcoming uh, single or album? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it's been released yet, but... Um, Wes Cage, what kind of music is Wes Cage? It's um, like heavy metal, I think. <laughs> Yeah, it makes sense. It really oh, makes no, no, sense. No, 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 no. It's the logical choice for his m music direction. You know, it's being In Nicholas, fact, um, it's, fu Cage's it's, it's funny. Um, I watched Birdie again mm, with Matthew movie. Modine oh, Birdie. and, uh, and uh, Nicolas Cage. And this was 1983, directed or 84, directed by Alan Parker. Oh, Parker. Fantastic director. Did he also direct The Commitments? I think he did. Probably. OK, um, so what a great film. It, it was, be you know, all, a lot of great films are based on really good stories and books. Only. Only, do you think? Because we were talking uh, to Kieran J. Walsh. <laughs> The J stands for cunt. Um, <laughs> no. But but um, but uh, love Kieran. Um, <laughs> you have to say you love someone and then attack. Uh, no, what he said, it's hard to fuck up. Like like yeah, y y you can you can fuck up a good story, but it's very hard to make a, a good film out of a shite story. Mm. And that's that's true. It makes sense. The most important part of a film and the least expensive is the fucking script. Anyway, Birdie. It's not least expensive. I the mean, script. The script. Well, in terms of, uh, you know, writing, it, it, it's not it, it's not expensive. Yeah, but like it takes time. Yeah. And a lot of head to come up with a good story. No, it can take just one person to write a great story. Okay. Um, <laughs> although, no, I know what you mean in scripted sitcoms yes. or in uh, sketch shows. Have you but ever watched them? transcript a good story to uh i hate friends i never liked friends by the way that tv show it annoyed the piss out of me well, i friends. saw it recently and Quirky it's quite progressive under this quirkiness Is it? they 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 talk a lot of dirty things and i know oh, it's just like it's, it's like six say. six young kids talking in a way that no kids talk hey quirky to quirky and they're your one's fucking hair and they're all just and it's all these primary colors it's just so annoying uh, i think i it's can't a stand it and the young man, hey joey <laughs> what about a uh, big bang theory how about that one i, 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 I can I, never i can't, I can't watch, watch it because the big bang theory and then you want <laughs> it's like get fuck off <laughs> you know hey i am no this is I, definitely I, I, not i mean for we're, you. We're, weirdly um so i loved it for daniel loved it daniel loved it for, what did i miss out daniel on a big bang theory i i, did, I mean i just watched it but I, I don't know if i loved it it was just like it's easy easy tv like yeah you know, yeah yeah just but it was funny it's kind of funny. Yeah, kind kind of funny. funny yeah I don't so know. Uh, uh, sorry so that's really good news nicholas cage shooting a film in western australia yeah the, so if the there's surfer. anybody in australia listening to and that's why we're not together you know go got, get it well i'd say there'd be a set you could probably go up to him hey nick he loves that <laughs> 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 nick, hey nick love you love you man he probably just go hey <laughs> all right try, try and, try, try and be, be a fan right and i'm learning my lines i'm pretending to be nicholas cage what's the film called the surf the surfer yeah surfer okay what's it I how do you do sorry yeah uh, uh nick i'm so sorry I one more. yeah i'm just learning lines right now can we do self selfie you know 
A, B, C, D, E, F. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> Try to learn lines. What part of fuck you? Okay, yo, you want a selfie? Yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, I was just like terrified. <laughs> okay, want a selfie? So there's so much going on. Anyway, look, 1984, Birdie, watch it. Fantastic film. It's really beautiful. Uh, Matthew Modine's character is obsessed, OCD, about uh, birds and pigeons and things like that. And there's, you know, when you watch a film and immediately you're put, you're at ease because it's it's an honest representation of actual fucking dialogue. I'm not even asking for a story, but just something to, yeah, that's how people are. Love it. Mm. There's nothing as strange as folk. They used to say there's nothing as queer as folk. But anyway, there's nothing as strange. Like anything that you can imagine, people in real life are weirder. I mean, God knows, even on this road, on any road. Hi, how are you doing? Door closes. You know what I mean? We have the kitty cutter. You know, somebody yeah. in this area. If you don't know, ladies and gentlemen, we have a cat called Felix, black and white cat across the road and two years ago someone shaved the fucking cat no. oh yeah hey I like the shaved pussy sorry someone <laughs> shaved the, someone, someone shaved the cat and, and uh, you know what I mean actually there was a yeah and because cats need their whiskers and all that to feel their way into things but it really did they cut the whiskers cut the well? whiskers so they oh. would they would have had to sedate mm. Well, just hold the cat. I mean, no, you couldn't are... hold a fucking cat like that and shave it. You would have had to sedate it. You would have had to give it cat relaxers. So, I mean, anyway, but it definitely traumatized little fucking mm. uh, uh, thing. Actually, there was a comedian last night in uh, the, uh, what you call it? Workman's, Workman's Club. Club. And she was talking about shaving her pussy. <laughs> she was talking about shaving. Oh, no, she was saying to a guy in the audience, do you like it shaved or bushy? And the guy said, oh, kind of halfway. And then, oh, yeah. So you've had experience of both. Then, and he, he got a bit embarrassed. But she was saying that her vagina, her vagina, not her vagina, is bald. She said oh, so pussy is bald. So, so she said her pussy looks like it did when she was 10. This is what she yeah, was saying. Yeah, like Barbies. You know, Barbie doesn't have, but like it's, <laughs> it's just. But you can laser it off and then you don't need to shave it ever or wax. Okay. Um, <laughs> look, at the, look at the lads again. Well, I don't. We don't. Yeah, you're not gonna ask you. You, you can't get, go up to your son. So, Jack, Daniel, do you like? Uh, do you like uh, a shaved? Do you like a shaved? Anyway, uh, conspiracy corner. Today, I want to talk about who they are. So, who are they? They're always in conspiracies. You hear about. Um, People talking about they, the the overarching controllers of the world. Oh yeah, and there is a they, uh, there is. and they're called Black Rock. Oh. Has anyone heard of Black Rock? Yes. Not is the it? suburb in Dublin. No, Black Rock. Uh, are they the uh, military dudes? No, no that's the no. Wagner Group. No, Black Rock are uh, an investment firm, and they are the biggest investment firm in the world. And they, um, they, they, they. Have, they, they are the they. And they have uh, they have stakes in about eighty six percent of the companies in the S and P five hundred. So they're what's, the most. What's S and P? So Standard the, the S and P five hundred is uh, an is index S&P? fund. So it's on the stock market. What does S and P stand for? It doesn't matter. I don't know. What okay. S and P. It's S S and P. Uh, I don't know exactly okay, what sorry. it stands for. But uh, it's basically it has a committee and they vote on the most. Uh, profitable, pro- profitable and biggest companies and they put them there. So if you want to put money into an index fund or whatever, it's a very safe thing to put into. But BlackRock have uh, stakes in 86% of the companies there. So they have huge stakes in like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. And how many people are in BlackRock? Uh, Do they know? I don't know exactly because the thing about BlackRock is it's quite it's hard to pinpoint who the, there's no leader of BlackRock. There's right. like seven people who are at the top, but then there's they're they're a multinational. They're an international they're a business. Franchise. Yeah, you know, they're just like split their yeah, assets. Yeah, it's so funny, isn't it? You know, we know about the, you know some people are quite ostentatious about their wealth. They want to let you know how wealthy they are, but there's loads of heads you know behind the scenes who are just amassing vast sums of money. Mm. But but these guys, BlackRock, the only co- so for example, they have a higher like their 
their their worth is 40 times higher than the GDP of South Africa. So like South Africa is the one of the richest. Co- I think Egypt's the richest country in Africa. Then South Africa. It's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> so and, and the amount of decisions that they can make. Like even when you think about it, I was walking past the big hotel that's go- go- that's being built on the uh, Portobello Harbour thing. Like I mean, you know who who is who is actually like like yeah. you know I'm I invest money into this podcast and I hope in the future at some point we start to reap mm. the benefit of it but who is the person behind that hotel or the group is there three or five or well eight? the way I like to look at do, it do you know what I'm saying I, and then I, you look at it you sorry I wrong. see it as like it's a corporate feudal system okay but corporate even corporate it's sort of distancing you from you know yeah. the way people when they say well we at think of a company you know that advertises in Ireland a lot Apple uh, we at Apple you know, like the CEO of Apple. No, it's not, you know, you are fucking Apple. You know, like they, it, it kind of dehumanizes, you know, when corporations become corporations, they can kind of get away with things. They can be psychopathic. Yeah, they well, are psychopathic. That, that's, that's the thing about these international... But you are the corporation fuckface. Yeah, they, they are fuckface. They're, they're not necessarily psychopathic because they you know, behave in a psychopathic way. See, but, but they the just they, they, they wield so much power because the, especially international uh, corporations, they work in so many different types, so many different countries and they have more money generally than the countries. So if you're a country and you're trying to stand up to a corporation, well, they can just go to the next country over and then they can work with other corporations and make your country lose money. So. It's almost like countries are kind of, they're just the facade of who is actually in power, which is like big corporations. It's that amazing. Are controlling yeah. the, the, the flow of money, they control all the assets. And so you, countries are yeah. countries are actually <laughs> lending money off these people. But also, Dan, and I'm sorry to bring it back to that big hotel there on Portobello Harbour, but like whoever those investors are that created the amount of money f- for, to make that happen, who knows where they live? But they, I don't, I doubt they, they live. Don't live they, they probably don't live here. So they're making these decisions that are uh, that are blocking the fucking sunlight of people who live but in the how area. That give them the permission well, to build. Well, what, 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 what I'm there, saying is, some what county council, the county council has to give the the okay. Yeah, yeah. But you can right? buy so, it. So, but what I'm, so what I'm, these, so these huge, huge companies, what's forty grand to them? Nothing. If they give forty grand cash to whoever. Yes, hundred percent. Someone in the county council, he's going to be, oh yeah, yeah no, yeah, no yeah. bother, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's nothing for that. But but also yeah. like the amount of money required to buy that huge acre, that huge land, and then the amount of money required to build this infrastructure and engineers and big construction that goes on for a year, year and a half. You know the the huge amount of wealth. Then you know. Uh, fitting out the fucking hotel so it's just so and then hiring all these people and then starting to you know like it's such a long term investment it's so much money and uh, you know again back to actors talking about uh, you know not getting paid enough do you think hotel workers get paid enough actors well, well, well they're do, do hotel workers well. they're, they're protesting as well well you touched well be. you touched on another thing there like um, you know linking it back to AI with the actors you know the the wheels of evolution keep turning and you can't stop it mm. you know yes. no matter how hard you try it's either you go backward or you go forward so either we say we're going to go back to a simplistic way of living where we, oh, all, we can't but we all have small hold fast but it, the nature of humanity isn't like that so you know it's always going to keep going and then if we you're talking about the hotels and everything getting built in a certain way they do kind of need to be built because you need these huge industrious products uh, huge industrious projects to uh, put people into employment, you know, yeah, circulate money. Because it's all just, you know, it's all kind of bullshit. It's funny, you know, there money was... It's so circulated around. Like, it some doesn't co- even exist. It's all on paper being shifted from one, one account I'd love to, to be another. in. But that's why BlackRock are so... Uh, so powerful is because they control so many assets. I think there's another and company called everything. Vanguard. Vanguard work with uh, BlackRock. Uh, yeah, so... Even so, probably they even won. They just have yeah, two pretty names, much, pretty but they pretty much. We should won. start so our own, own. We should start our own investment company. They own and, the they, world. But just think of it, you know, a really insidious name like, you know, Slate Kill, Kill <laughs> Kill Slaters, Kill Kill Magpie. That would Mag- be a good one. Magpie Magpie Fund. Yes, yeah, it's it's, it's oh, yeah. obvious you we are all stealing. The other birds, yeah. It's that we are stealing, but we're just not hiding it. Hi, my name's Kevin Goodwin from the Magpie Fund. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so we're initial investment. Uh, 
we start at one billion. Uh, is that good for you? Would you like yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, that, okay, that sounds billion. good. So, in a long term yield, one billion would be two billion. Yeah. Um, are you willing to accept a shortfall of the long short settings? Oh, uh, y- yeah, I yeah. guess so. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Lovely to do the Lovely business. Lovely to do the business, business with, with you. you. Unfortunately, it will put uh, 300 people out of a job and out of work and uh, homeless. Well, is that okay with you? Oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. As long as I get my profit. Great. Great. Those people. Those people. NPCs. Uh, we don't owe them anything. Don't owe them. They should th- be thanking us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nat- we put them out of the misery. Natural selection. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Darwin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. All right. <laughs> we Namaste. Just, we, we just made a lot of money there. But yeah, like Vanguard and BlackRock, they have stakes in uh, 21% Expedia Group, Bookings, ho- Bookings, uh, dot com, American Express, TripAdvisor, Airbnb, Boeing, Apple, Microsoft, um, Netflix. Probably like, uh, like military. Everything. Every yeah, Lockheed Martin. They got it in that. Like they've got it in absolutely everything. We're such little consumer piglets suckling mm. on the tit of Netflix and Apple and everything. Oh. And, uh, Apple have a new project that you don't need. Oh, you know, let me spend way too much money for something I don't need with money I don't. But have. Do you know, we've been hypnotized by all this. I'm uh, so hypnotized. Yeah, so we can't think for ourselves. And you know, the feudal system is back, so they get rid of middle class. So they want us to bow to them and do what they tell us to you do. You will have nothing, and you will be happy. Mm-hmm. Hi, my Never name's. Said. What's his name? Uh, that German guy, yeah. The, the what's his name? One. Uh, what's his name, Jack? Make me a hen. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> Wh- which guy? Which German? Yeah, you know, you know, you know that guy. World that Economic Forum. Oh yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yes. You will have nothing, and you will have. He's German. We should put put that on the pad, actually. You will have nothing, and you will be happy. Yeah. Well, what's his name? He actually is uh, Klaus Schwab. Hi. <laughs> Yeah. Hi everyone. Hello, Instafarkas, and hello, people who watch this. Yeah, um, the future. You will have nothing, but you will be happy, and you will be happy about it. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. I don't have anything. I have nothing. No responsibilities. By the way, um, BlackRock. Uh, as of 2021, at least three executives from BlackRock operate notable positions in President Joe Biden's cabinet. Can I just say, on the off chance that any executives or investors yeah, just uh, in, in are, are watching from BlackRock or Vanguard, I'm in. <laughs> and I don't have much money, but whatever it is, I'll put it in. Please, I'd really appreciate it. I want to be part. I want to be them. I identify as them. I just have I'm, one thing to say to BlackRock. <laughs> <laughs> or they. I invent I identify I identify as they. Yeah. You know just talking about the money and how much money is spent, I just heard that US spent trillion dollars <coughs> on Ukraine war. Okay. <laughs> trillion. Ladies. How much is that? Uh, trillion. Okay. For just killing killing things. People. Okay. <laughs> Folks. Thank you very much, Hannah. Uh, and that's why we're not together. Jack, the very best of luck in Greece. We want to see photos and videos of the Parthenon. Exciting times. Thank you, Daniel. 